In my speech, I will cover three main points. The current uh, dimension of uh, digital terrestrial television in Europe and the evolution towards HD and uh, 4K. Um, the comparison of digital terrestrial uh, television and uh, mobile uh, 4G networks and services, and why EBU and RAI support the roadmap and milestones of uh, the LAMI report. Uh, as regards the first point, I mean the current dimension of the uh, terrestrial digital television in Europe and the, tele and the evolution towards HD and UHD, we think that DTT will remain the preeminent television viewing platform in Europe for the foreseeable future. In fact, it provides viewers with significant benefits, including universal coverage and free-to-air services. Linear television continues to grow, while non-linear and ancillary screens complement traditional viewing. Furthermore, various trends can be identified. First, the um, introduction of high definition HD permits a remarkable and significant improvement of, pic of picture quality in comparison to the former analog TV systems. It is expected a huge increase of demand of, uh, in the next future, but HD requires four times more bandwidth than standard definition. The second trend is the introduction of 4K or UHD, which provides a further improvement in uh, image quality, but it provides, it's, it requires 16 times more bandwidth than standard definition. Moreover, it is very important to consider that for broadcasting companies in the transitional period, it's important and mandatory to guarantee the so-called simulcast, which means the contemporary transmission of standard definition and HD or UHD together. Uh, the second point of discussion is a brief uh, a comparison of DTT versus uh, 4G or mobile 4G networks. Um, it is very important to provide an economical and technical uh, comparison uh, because this point will impact a, a huge number, a great number of uh, population. Uh, the first uh, argument is about uh, the uh, uh, size of uh, displays of the terminals. Of course, the mobile service was uh, invented for uh, mobile application using small devices with small displays. On the contrary, fixed television uh, can allow big displays, large displays, uh, supporting really HD and 4K. The second point is the spectrum and network efficiency. Transmitting a high number of HD and the standard definition programs via a mobile network would lead to an inefficient use of resources in terms of spectrum bandwidth, number of transmis transmitters needed or base stations, and the upgrading of a network designed to transmit in a unicast different data packets to different subscribers. Um, Moreover, TV distribution services via mobile networks will generate significant increase of the electromagnetic pollution in towns or urban areas. The final point is about uh, the digital divide for broadband. You know very well that there is a strong difference in availability of broadband telecommunication services in different geographical areas between the different European countries and inside countries between urban and rural population. In fact, the operators of broadband communication networks face difficulty when providing adequate levels of modern information services to rural and remote areas. Currently, it is thought that ubiquitous broadband in the areas of digital divide in Italy is not scheduled available before the years between 2025 and 2030. Uh, the fourth topic is the guaranteed technical quality. The broadband TV service is peculiar and different from the usual telecommunication services because it requires a guaranteed technical quality in terms of constant bitrate for transmission services. 
And this is a fundamental characteristic which cannot be achieved when you share the frequency band, available frequency band, which is a typical uh, characteristic of the cellular networks. Um, on the other hand, the cellular mobile networks can suffer connectivity failures due to the blocking of traffic congestion because they share the uh, cellular bandwidth and sometimes loss of powers at key network centers. My final point is why EBU and RAI support the roadmap and milestones of the LAMI report. And these are the key arguments. First, DTT, the TTT platform is currently jeopardized by the scarcity of radio frequency spectrum. The real location of the 700 MHz band will reduce the total available uh, spectrum, spectrum available for DTT by an average of 30%, 3-0, which is really a, a huge amount of spectrum. Um, moreover, a lack of spectrum resources for terrestrial broadcasting will lead to an increase of mutual interference between stations and the more complicated and expensive infrastructure of communication and broadcasting networks uh, to compensate for the increased mutual interference. Well, then, in the perspective of the next ITU work 2015 in November this year, it is to be remarked, it, 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 we have to remark that 4G cannot share spectrum with DTT. This critical aspect is expected to be a major difficulty in the implementation of IMT in the 700 MHz band, unless a coordinated approach between administrations is defined for the release of the band by broadcasting companies. At the European level, the date of 2020 plus or minus two years, which is the statement of the LAMI report, has been proposed for the release of 700 megahertz band from broadcasting. Uh, when this happens, in order to maximize the transmission capacity in the reduced number of TV broadcasting spectrum resources, as, above, I, as I said uh, before, it should be adopted the new standard DVB-T2 with the new codex. And this requires a proper regulatory support. In conclusion, um, EBU and RAI supports uh, the LAMI report. Uh, and uh, we believe that as regards to the 700 megahertz band, 2022 is the earliest date for this release in order to guarantee the investment already made by broadcasters and the end users and to uh, allow the uh, uh, fast penetration of the most efficient transmission and encoding techniques supporting the new services like HD and 4K. As regards the 500 and 700 MHz band, the possible release of these bands should be foreseen not before 2030, after a proper investigation around 2025 of the following aspects. The needs for simulcasts between SD, HD and 4K. The need of introducing the new technical standards, more efficient and the penetration of uh, uh, the new distribution media for supporting uh, the fixed broadband fixed broadband satellite uh, uh, transmission right the spectrum policy needs to reflect the fact that tv remains a hugely popular medium and that future mobile data traffic growth can be addressed without compromising the future of the thank you thank you very much